Hi guys, welcome to this video on using arrays for two-step experiments. And you're going, what? And I'm going to go, eh, I'm coming to it. My name's Darren from MathsGuru. Thank you very much for watching. Can you do me a massive favor before I get started, if you haven't already done so, and that is subscribe to my YouTube channel. I know it sounds very needy, but by that clicking that button, you just let me know that you've actually watched the video. Turn off notifications if you want to, but that actually means the world to me if you subscribe. There is also MathsGuru.com, which is in the corner there. That'll actually, if you go over there, free to sign up, you get downloadable notes, videos, all sorts of funky stuff, exam questions for later on. And if you're using it in year nine now, I can promise you there will be lots of stuff you can use later on as well. All right, what are we dealing with this lesson? We are going to look at understand what it means to be a two-step experiment. Know the most appropriate way to display the results of a two-step experiment. Know what it means to perform an experiment with and without replacement. And know how to calculate the probabilities associated with two-step experiments. Now... If you have been watching my previous videos, you will know in the first video we looked at probabilities and finding them, basic probabilities really. But really, once you know how to find the basics, the rest of them should be relatively straightforward. Then we dealt with Venn diagrams and two-way tables before moving on in the last video to set notation. So we know about the intersection, we know about union, we know about empty sets, we know about contain within, and we know about elements. If none of that made any sense to you at all, go on, pause this video. Fire up the other videos, they're pretty good. And hopefully I'll explain all of that to you before we move on. Now, there's lots of experiments we can do in maths and many of them require us to do something twice. And that's very much what a two-step experiment is. It's an example for, so for example, uh, I'm tossing a coin. If I tossed a coin twice and wrote down what I got on both coins, that is an example of a two-step experiment. What about rolling a die? Roll the die twice write down the numbers. Again, that is a two-step experiment. But how would we work out what all the possible outcomes were going to be if I did this twice? So for example, if I roll a die twice and write down all the different ways that numbers can come out of that, how many would I end up with? What about if a coin, I throw that twice? How many different ways are there of doing it? Well, actually, let's look at the coin now. Well, if you got a coin, what I want you to do is pause the video, and toss it twice and see what happens. All right, so having tossed the coin, you write down the information and hopefully some of you will have got a head followed by a head. All right, you would have got two heads. Others would have got a head first followed by a tail. Now I emphasize the word first there because order is important. The next way could have been a tail followed by a head or a tail followed by a tail. And believe it or not, there are no other outcomes that are possible. There are four possible ways of doing it. And that becomes useful later on when we try and work out, you know, how many outcomes there are going to be when we've been given particular information. Now, there is a pattern to be able to write down these type of things, and it follows a binary idea because there are two outcomes. If you look at this first column here, it goes head, tail, head, tail. If you look at this column here, it goes head, head, tail, tail. If there was a third column, all right, so if I wrote this out as head, 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 tail, tail, head, and tail, and tail, if I now added a third column in, what you would find is the first four would all be heads. Because this was, the first column was one head, one tail, one head, one tail. The next column would be two heads, two tails, two heads, two tails. And that column there is four heads, four tails. So again, I now I know I can continue this because I know there are going to be four tails. This one here is going to go head, head, tail, tail. And this one's going to go head, tail, head, and tail. So in that situation, how many different outcomes would we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now, coins are great because realistically speaking, I now know there's a pattern to be able to do this and I'm not going to miss an outcome. But listing all these things gets a little bit trying, doesn't it? It's long. Isn't there a nicer way of being able to do this? Well, as it turns out, oh yes, there is. We can actually create a table or in Barry's language, thank you, Barry, an array. So we can do this in the following. Now, the order of these tables, again, is important. What you'll notice is I've written here first throw and I've written second throw. Generally speaking, convention is the, uh, the columns are the first thing we do. The rows are the second thing. And you will notice that for our first row, we've then, and the sort of the row below that, written the two outcomes because it's head or tail for a coin. And we notice for our second throw, we have head and tail again. 
Awesome. Now, what are these things in brackets? Well, that's an outcome, isn't it? That's a possible um, way of, of throwing my two coins. So if I look at this one here that I am now highlighting in blue, what do we notice? Head, head. Now, it's written in brackets for a reason. I'll explain why in just a moment. But the order of that is important. If I look at this second one that I'm highlighting in blue now, what do we notice? It's T comma H. Why? Because my first throw was a tail and my second throw was a head. That order becomes important. Now, having done that, we may then be asked to list the sample space. That is not a list, that is a table. If I wanted to list my sample space, if you remember, my sample space always starts with curly brackets. Then I literally copy in in curved brackets, an outcome, put a comma between it. My next outcome, T comma H. My next outcome, H comma T, comma, T comma T in brackets. And obviously, hopefully you realize those brackets are there telling uh, the viewer or whoever's reading this that that is an outcome. If I just did H comma H comma T comma H comma H comma T, it'd be very, very confusing. And in fact, it'd be wrong, I'm sorry to say. So that is one way of doing a table. But then we get to the point of with and without replacement. And you're gonna say, huh? Imagine I've got a bag. He's gonna draw a bag. There we go, that is the worst bag I've ever drawn in my entire life. And I'm gonna put four spherical objects in them. And I'm gonna actually say three of them are shaded and one of them is unshaded. Right, I'm gonna take a spherical object from that bag and I want to know what's the probability of a shaded. So the probability of shaded is going to be how many shaded there were, three, divided by how many there were in total, four. Now, I've got that shaded one in my hand. I'm going to drop it back in the bag, I'm going to slush the bag around and ask you, what is the probability of getting a shaded again? Well, there's three shaded in the bag out of four, so again, the probability would stay the same. But what would happen if I didn't replace the shaded? How many would I then end up with? Well, there'd only be three balls in total and only two of them would be shaded. So having taken that one out and put it on the side, I now go back and say, well, what's the probability of a shaded ball now? Well, there's only two out of three. So by not replacing, my probabilities start to change. That becomes really important a little bit later on. But what we're going to deal with it at the moment is this array idea. So I've got the cat. I've got the letters of the word cat. I've put them in a bag, bag and I'm going to take out a letter. I'm going to look at it, write it down, put that back in, and then try again. Now, because I'm putting it back in, it means all of those letters are in play for both letters. So if I now write here, C comma C, that is absolutely possible because I can have the letter C and I can have the letter C followed again. This one here is going to be A comma C, not C comma A. Why? Because the first letter is an A, the second letter is a C. This is going to be T comma C. This is going to be C comma A. A comma A. T comma A. This one here is going to be C comma T. A comma T and t comma t. Now, having done that, which is relatively quick and easy, I can see how many different outcomes there are. And again, by looking at this, I've got nine possible outcomes. That's gonna help me with probabilities. I can actually use this table to work out some probabilities. The question is gonna be now, what is gonna happen with out replacement? What if I take the letter C out and don't replace it? Is it gonna be possible to get a second C? No. So what we're gonna do is actually gonna put a little X in there that goes, eh, eh, no deal, can't be done, thank you very much. And in fact, anywhere there are two letters the same, I'm not gonna be able to do it because having taken out the A, there's not a second A. So that's gonna be a cross and that's gonna be a cross. So in that situation, all of the diagonals are cross. It's not possible without replacement. So is it possible then to get A followed by C? Oh yes, because those letters are in play in that bag. That's gonna be T comma C, C comma A, T comma A, C comma T, and A comma T. Now what we notice here is there's only one, two, three, four, six possible outcomes. So the number of outcomes has changed because I've suddenly not put letters back in the bag. And again, these are the type of questions we can use, to use in an exam. Right, I've got a couple of examples. Let's see what we've got. Two coins are tossed, 
draw a table to list the sample space, all right? So draw a table to list the sample space. Now again, we've already done this one here, but let's just do it. So we've got head, and we've got tail, we've got head, and we've got tail. So again, I'm gonna do first, draw a line across here. Probably don't need this column there, but anyway, second. And what have we got here? Draw a table to list the sample space. So I'm gonna have H comma H, T comma H, H comma T, and T comma T, ka -ching. Now again, if they were asking me to list the sample space, then I'd have to do epsilon equals, and then write all of those down in there. And again, one of my students has been, really, that's so long. Well, okay, but it's worth a mark in an exam, and it seems silly to not get that mark just by skipping it. Find the probability of obtaining HT. Now here, the order is important. It's gotta be head followed by tail. So where, how many of those are in my table? One, congratulations. So my probability of H comma T is gonna be one, is that right? Nope, it's a probability, so it's gotta be a fraction. So it's gonna be one divided by, how many different outcomes were there? Well, looking at that, there's four different outcomes. We're gonna do one divided by four, ka-ching, there we go. Find the probability of one head. Now what that means is, the probability of only getting one head. So how many different ways are there of there being just a H and a T? So we've got one here, which is TH, that's only got one head in it. And then H comma T, that's got another head in it. So that would be two out of four. Am I gonna leave that like that? No, please don't. Because in maths, you have to cancel down fractions. So in that situation, that would become one half. Already loving this. Right, two letters are chosen at random from the word tree without replacement. Okay, list the outcomes in a table. So let's see what we've got here. We've got T, R, E, E, T, R, E, and E. Let's draw some lines quickly. Now again, when you do your tables, please, please, please use a ruler. Our people get very, very upset. So we're gonna say first and second. Now, what is gonna be important here is to notice that the, this E, the first E in the word tree is different from the second E in tree, all right? So I'm gonna explain what that means in just a moment. But what do you now remember? Without replacement, I take the T out. Is there gonna be a T back in the bag to choose? Nope. So it's not gonna be possible to have TT. It's not gonna be possible to have RR. And it is not gonna be possible to have that one there. Now the reason being is that E in the third column and the E in the third row are the same E. So you cannot take that individual E out and replace it. And likewise, that second E and the second E can't be done as well. Now I know for my math group, we had a very interesting discussion about that, but I'm gonna leave that to one side. The rest of it should hopefully be fairly self-explanatory. So there's gonna be RT, ET, phone home, ET, phone home. TR, he says writing terribly. ER, we don't wanna to go to the ER, and ER. Now if I get any of these wrong, I hopefully won't, so that's TE. RE, religious education, EE, e. uh, what's this one gonna be, TE, that's gonna be RE again, and that one's gonna be E, E, ka -ching. So how many outcomes have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Now I always write the outcomes down beside, just it helps me if I have to work out probabilities. Oh, hold on a moment, I gotta work out some probabilities. Right, find the probability that the two letters chosen are both E, right, well how many outcomes are those? Well there's one, two, so the probability, they're both, E is gonna be two out of how many? 12, which is gonna give me one out of six. Again, you must, must cancel these down. Find the probability that at least one of the letters in E. When it says at least, it includes the one, so it's gotta have one E or it can have two E's. So I'm gonna write this one up here, probability at least one E. I'm gonna write that equal because I'm running out screen real estate. So I've got at least one E. There's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So in that situation, 
there is going to be 10 of those which actually have at least one E. And by that mean it has one E or two E's. Again, cancelling that down is going to give me five on six. And there is my correct answer. And we're done. That's the end of this video. Hopefully it has made sense to you. Please subscribe if you can. Leave me a comment below if you're watching it on YouTube. Let me know if it's been useful or not. Um, and hopefully I'll see you in another video. If not, you take care, guys, yeah? And please stay safe.